At the end of part one, we left you at Hooton's disused platform. We now continue round the curve to the first station at Hadlow Road. This presentation is brought to you by Blighty PC for on-site business and home IT support solutions. Hadlow Road Station was the first station on the Parkgate branch line from Hooton and opened in 1866. An extension to West Kirby was completed 20 years later. It may be presumed that the name Hadlow Road was used to distinguish it from the pre-existing Cheshire station at the other end of the county in the village of Williston. The main station building is on the eastbound platform towards Hooton. On the other side, westbound towards West Kirby, stands a smaller shelter. At the western end of the platforms, there was a level crossing with quite big gates. And this was due to the angle of the road that crossed the railway lines. The station closed to passengers in September 1956, but the track was continued for use for the use of freight transportation and driver training for another six years, closing completely on the 1962 the tracks were lifted just two years later. More than 10 years after its closure, the railway route became part of a footpath called the Wirral Way, which is the first such designated site in Britain. All of the station on the eastbound side of the line has been preserved to give an authentic 1950s look, and a short section of track has been relayed in front of the platform. The signal box, however, is not original, having been previously located in Hassel Green on the North Staffordshire Railway. In 2012, proposals were submitted to West Cheshire and Chester Council for the re-establishment of a rail service on the railway as a heritage steam railway. The proposals initially envisaged the running of a steam train from Hadlow Road back to Hooton Railway Station, where the platform are still in existence. Moving on from Hadlow Road Station, the line dropped down through the Neston Cutting and approached Neston South. The station opened to serve the local colliery in Neston in 1866, but from its opening up until 1952 when it closed, it was simply known as Neston Railway Station. It consisted of a brick station building and two platforms. It was situated though half a mile southeast of Neston North Station, which is now just named Neston Station. But a factor which affected Neston South during its existence was being sighted some distance away from the town centre. Neston South closed to passengers in 1956, but the track continued to be used for transportation of freight, as with the rest of the line, and closed completely in 62. But now the station buildings and platforms have been completely demolished and the site was redeveloped for housing. You can see here the road named Station Road where the station platforms did exist. And you can see the bridge in which the tracks towards Nesta North go over. From when the line opened until October 1886, Park Gate Station was the end of the line. The original station was a temporary wooden structure as a possible future extension to West Kirby had been taken into consideration. For this purpose a second station was built which opened in 1886. The old station buildings were retained as a goods yard. The original station and then goods yard is now a car parking area for the Wirral Way footpath. On the other side of the road, the raised bank shows the location of the newer platform. Now, just adjacent to the station, is this narrow gauge track and cart. This is in celebration of the local nearby Neston Colliery Railway. As the railway continues, as you approach Heswell, it suddenly takes an unnatural turn to the left. This is because after the line was closed and track lifted, two sections of the railway were sold for housing, one being at Neston and the other one here at Heswell. 
So users of the Wirral Way have to detour down Davenport Road, then back onto the Wirral Way a bit further down. So Heswell Station, not to be confused with the other Heswell Station, which was renamed to Heswell Hills at the time both were in operation, served Heswell from 1886 to 1956. Here, where Station Road meets Davenport Road, gives a clue to its original identity. The wooden fence giving a clue as to where the bridge would have passed over the tracks. The slip road on the left is an original approach to the southbound platform. This approach served a cattle dock, which was the largest on the line outside of West Kirby. There was also an unusually large 10 ton crane. Both platforms had a single story brick building for waiting facilities and canopies are also provided on both platforms. There was also a signal box on the Hooton platform just south of the waiting rooms. Here the dedicated name of Station House shows the rough location of the original station building. This small cul-de-sac shows the locations where the platforms were. The original station house was sold into private ownership and then subsequently sold on for development in the 1970s. The site was raised and built over in the 1960s and all walkers cyclists must take a detour to regain the track bed. The next station along the line is Thurston, and apart from Hadler Road, this is the only station with obvious remains that a station was there. And here you can see the remains of the northbound ticket office building. It was opened in April 1886 and the station road was constructed from land donated by local landowners to provide access from the village of Thurston to the station itself. And during the Second World War, the line was used for transportation of ammunition. Heavy anti-aircraft gun emplacements were built on the land just to the west of the station, but have since been grassed over. But despite the regular seasonal tourist attraction from the station, passenger numbers generally remained low. And in February 1954, the station was closed, although the line itself remained open to passengers for another two years. The track, of course, continued to be used for freight until the line closed in 1962. Apart from the two platforms, the cattle dock can still be seen. Coldy station did not open until 1909. The station was located though on the west side of the village of Coldy and situated on the top of the high embankment. This was due to local landowner objecting to the original intended course of the line which resulted in the station being much closer to the coast of the River Dee than was planned. The site consisted of just a single platform on a single track section. The station building was constructed of corrugated iron and just had a ticket office and waiting room. Just like with Thurston Station, the station closed in 1954 and was completely demolished, leaving no trace of the station's existence. After Coldy, the next station down the line was Kirby Park. This wooden station was situated just off Sandy Lane. Apart from the bridge, the only remnants of this station is the entrance at the side of the bridge, which led down to the main platform. It was named after the local Kirby Park, the area surrounding the house Kirby Mount, which was formerly the summer residence of John Helston Leach the 15th of Carden. It was an experimental station and was constructed mainly of timber and it was only 800 to 900 yards south of the current West Kirby Railway Station. Kirby Park closed before most of the stations on this line. However, just for the school purposes, it remained open until 1956. Here you can see contrasting views of then 
and now. Just 50 yards from the old station entrance, the cafe Kirby Park is a fitting tribute to the station with railway paraphernalia outside. As we approach the end of this line, we reach West Kirby. West Kirby station does still exist, but West Kirby Joint is the platform that supplied this line. At this point, the tracks went under a road bridge. The station platform was on the left, just where Orisdale Road is now. The line then connected to the Birkenhead Headline, where West Kirby station is now. The station and the sidings are where West Kirby Concourse are today. The car park is the location of the sidings and connecting line to the station. This overhead shot shows the vast area that the station, sidings and West Kirby Joint Station took up. From here you can see the current station, the old road bridge and the West Kirby Joint platform. 